Hello everyone, my name is Dave Partner and welcome to your first tutorial on Laravel. This is a tutorial for Laravel 5.3, as you can see. Laravel is a PHP framework and uh, if you already know PHP to any extent, uh, you must have been hearing about PHP frameworks and how powerful they are. A PHP framework is basically a, a bunch of or uh, a method a way to use a bunch of um, libraries and components already written components for PHP and uh, utilities so that your development becomes faster all right um, a whole a lot of things are abstracted such that um, if you need to build a login page for instance a log or user authentication system in Laravel, it's just one line command. You just type in one line and uh, all of a sudden you have your user registration, login, forgot password, etc. built for you. And a whole lot of things that are done automatically so that you can concentrate in the part of your code that makes your app different from other apps. It's really, really interesting and a very, very powerful tool to use. Also, PHP framework is good for people working with teams. Because if you are working uh, with a team that is using uh, Laravel, for instance, um, all you have to do to understand the code of the next guy is to know Laravel. Once you know Laravel, the code of the next guy is easy to understand because of the convention. All right. Uh, well, if you want to learn Laravel, you have to visit laravel.com. And um, the version we're running is 5.3 at this moment and uh, it has a uh, sort of new features here are the m three main features new features that 5.3 added all right and then you click on documentation we're going to first of all run through the installation uh, we'll go through what the server requirements for laravel is and uh, first of all you need to have php 5.6 or greater to run laravel 5.3 and uh, that means you need PHP to be running. So to run PHP, you have to create a new command line on your system to do this. Um, even before we do this, let's quickly download something that is kind of interesting. It's called Node.js. Um, everybody should just have this in their system. So let's have Node.js for no reason. Come to Node.js, you download um, any one you want. Um, this is the one I'm using, 6.8, and it's okay for me. You can download any of them. These are the two stable versions. All right, uh, once you download Node.js and install it, it's just a software, install it like a normal software. I already have it, I won't install. Uh, you quickly download PHP. To download PHP, just use any of the already um, compiled uh, any of the packages that already has PHP inside. So I will use WAM server. So you type WAM server, hit enter on your Google, it shows you WAM server, and uh, this is what we're looking for WAM server.com slash en. En is for English. So we'll click on it, it opens, then you download your WAM server according to the type of system you're using. In case yours is speaking French like mine. What you have to do is make sure that it's slash en or you come over here and click on english all right when i click on download it takes me to this point depending on the version of windows you're using i'm using 64 bits i click here if you're using 30 bits you click here so when you click you will see a link to um, it should start downloading otherwise you hit on download directly and that's it and um, all of a sudden you have one thing downloaded on your system then of course after download you install one there is no special setup you just click um install 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 or next 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 and then you're done after you have one server it means you already have php then you start one server on your system to start one server after installation always um come here and type one server one server and this guy shows up. When you click on it, one server will start. It will ask you a question, one server, whatever. And you click OK. And one server starts. 
And when web server starts, you don't notice any system, any change in your system. Just that if you're observant, you come to the lower right of your screen and click on this icon, then you see web server up and running. Sometimes when you install web server, you have errors like it will tell you that XYZ is not installed or XYZ not found. If it tells you that any the DLL file is not found, you have to copy that the name of that DLL. Go to Google, type the name of the DLL. Sometimes let me just assume that VC run the DLL is not found. So you just type um, download the name of the DLL. You hit enter, and uh, you go to Google and download it. Then next you Google how to install dll file on windows or whatever system you're using and um, you get the results too and uh, that's in case you have your web server came with errors of missing files or installation files otherwise once you are green it means you're good to go but if your web server is not green then there is problem and for each dll file you install each missing dll file you install you have to restart your web server so you right click Okay, now you, you left click and uh, you click on restart all services. You have to do that until your WAM server is green icon. Alright, so this is my WAM server and this is PHP. And uh, from here I can see my PHP version. My WAM server is set to 5.6. If you click here, it will set to 7.0. And um, let's get back to Laravel requirements and uh, we have 5.6 minimum and as you can see on my WAM server I have a minimum of 5.6 version 5.6 but hey there is a, a, a problem sort of because although WAM server might have a minimum version of PHP running PHP might not be accessible from your command line, so you need to open the command line. Uh, just come here and um, type cmd or node, anyone, just cmd, and uh, you have, click on this, you have a fresh new window open up on your system, and um, you type php and hit enter, because um, to run Laravel, php must be accessible from here, you hit enter. If nothing shows up, if, if nothing shows up, then um, you just have to wait, just like mine. I'm waiting, but if an error shows up, it means uh, it doesn't understand PHP. Although you have PHP installed, that means you have to uh, go and add PHP to your environment variables. If not, if you've not done that before, you have to come here and type environment. Yeah, system environment variables. You click on it, enter. When you click it opens a window then you have to find where php is installed for wham it's usually um you go to a folder your c drive i'll go to um where is it file explorer okay just open a folder in your system go to your c drive my C drive, you locate a folder called WAMP. In case you are using something like XAMPP or, or LAMP, there are many of them, MAMP. So you just have to find where your apps is. All right, if you're using any of them, it means that you already have PHP installed. If you already have WAMP server installed, you don't need to install WAMP server again. So you look for PHP and um, all right, I uh, will look for where PHP is in Bean. All right, um, here in my WAM64 Bean, and um, here I have PHP. And you, you look for the version of PHP you need. Me, I like uh, 7.0. Then um, this is what we're looking for. So that anytime we type PHP, this guy will run. But our system variable needs to know the address to where to find PHP. Okay, so we we'll click right click and copy this address and we come to the this is what opened up when we typed system variable here so when we typed system variable here environment variable environment we clicked on this and this window opened and then the next thing we're going to click is on here 
then now we're going to look for something called path this is the guy we're looking for so we click on edit you select it click on edit and uh, I'm using Windows 10 that's why my own interface is like this yours might be different depending on the version of Windows you're looking for but just know that these guys will be separated by semicolon semicolon if you're using uh, Windows 8 or Windows 7 an earlier version of Windows but Windows 10 makes it kind of user-friendly so here you have to click new if you're using Windows 10 and uh, paste your the, the the whatever we copied I already have it here I've done it already so I'll just delete what I just did now but this is you just need to add this to your environment variable if you're using an earlier version of Windows you just see one single line with all this separated by semicolon so you put semicolon behind the last uh, guy here and paste like this you put semicolon behind this guy and you right click and paste all right and you put your own semicolon again so this is how to add it in earlier versions of Windows. So, but I'm going to delete it because I'm, I'm using Windows 10. All right, now we are done. You click OK and um, OK and uh, OK. There's this temptation to come back to this window and try to run PHP again. No, it wouldn't work. What you should do is to close the windows. And once you close the windows you restart the command prompt again you come here and type node or type cmd we have cmd i'll click command and um, type php and you hit enter so this is the time it should run if you have any further error don't forget to google the error all right this is supposed to tell me the version of windows i'm running and um, now we've sorted out php installation we have to install something called Composer. Laravel utilizes Composer to manage its dependencies. So you need Composer. You right click on this link and uh, open in a new tab, or you simply head over to Google and um, type Composer download. This is the URL we're looking for. You click on it and it takes you to Composer. And uh, there are several ways. This is Composer website, getcomposer.org slash download, and I click on download, and uh, we are here. There are several ways to uh, to install Composer. This is one boring way, especially for Mac, and there are several other boring ways. But uh, if you're Windows, you just have to download this set of files, and uh, you're okay, you're done. Just download this guy and install it like a normal software, and that's it. So you restart your command line again. So you come here and type CMD after you have installed Composer. Open the new command line. And so you will try and use Composer to download Laravel. So we get back to Laravel. Um, as you can see, we're progressing from the top to the bottom. So we're here right now. We get back to Laravel. And this is the, the, the command to run to be able to install Laravel but if you want to know whether Composer is installed correctly you come to your command line and type Composer hit enter if it gives you uh, if it gives you this then your Composer was installed perfectly but it gives, if it gives you an error then obviously Composer wasn't installed then you repeat the process of uh, adding Composer to your system variable the way we did for PHP find where Composer is installed in your system and add it to your environment variables and uh, restart your command line or command prompt and um, run Composer again so this means Composer is running and it gives us all the available commands for Composer alright then we have to right click to paste this guy I copied this right click copy you come to your command prompt and right click and all of a sudden you have what you copied then you hit enter i've already installed laravel so i'll not hit enter so you hit enter after this it will simply install laravel for you and this might take time depending on the speed of your internet so just go take some coffee take some cheese go to facebook go to twitter tweet some rubbish and when you are back you can now start a new website here is a command to start a new Laravel site. So let's say you're building a site for a banking application. Or you can 
come to Laravel, come to your command prompt. First of all, you navigate to the folder you want to build. So if I if I run this command here, it will create a folder called blog inside this address and then it will install Laravel inside it. But this is not where I like my site to be. I usually uh, like my sites to be on my WAMP. Some like it on the desktop. If you like your site to be on the desktop, you just navigate to your desktop. And um, here is my desktop. You navigate to your desktop, you copy the URL to your desktop, oops, and um, paste it there. But I like mine to be in my WAMP folder. So if you are using one, then you may just enjoy my own method too. I like mine to be in a specific, all my sites to be in a specific folder. So you, you type CD, CD is for change directory, you need to move to the folder where the particular folder you want in your system, any folder is okay. CD, uh, C, one, C4, www, and that's it, you hit enter. So we have um, changed directory to this guy. This is where I want my Laravel project to be. And uh, this guy is the guy here for me personally is the guy one is the guy 64 www this is where i pay, i place all my websites that i'm creating all right and um, here is it so right click like this and let's say you're designing a site for a tutorial tutorial or banking app so you can type banking app you understand so laravel will automatically create a uh, a folder called banking app inside this folder and then install laravel this might take some time uh, but eventually um it will install depending on the, on the speed of your internet um because i have so many folders i like to start my laravel laravel then i'll put the name um testing so we are building a site we want to call testing. Uh, I like to preface my name, my personally, with um, the name of the framework I'm using because I have so many web projects, okay? So I'll hit enter. And this will obviously take some time because it's going to the internet to pull or download um, some files and uh, install it on your system. So you can just go take some coffee, go to it, and at the end, you have your Laravel project ready. All right, so in the next tutorial, we will see what has um, become of this uh, installation and we will continue from there. So thank you very much. See you in the next tutorial. And uh, don't forget to do some really nice stuff at this moment, which is um, subscribe to this video. If you're watching this video at the, from YouTube, at the bottom of this video, there is a red subscribe button. Click on it and subscribe. If you are not watching from YouTube, just visit YouTube slash C slash brain term O R O G brain term O R O G and hit enter. Once the page opens, you can subscribe to my channel because it means that when next I make a tutorial, you will have it.